Well, we're at the ATHS show in Reno, Nevada, and my ride is a 79A model Long Hood Kenworth. I was born in Corvallis, Oregon, which is beaver country, and uh, raised in Blodgett, where log trucks came by all the time, and I'd give them the horn, and I had one guy stop, and I was five years old. He wanted to know if I wanted to go for a ride, and I said, yeah, and uh, so he, he said, well, ask your parents, if they give you permission, be out here with an apple box and a pillow, and I'll pick you up, and we're going to Oregon City. I'm like, okay. So I asked my parents while well, he was hauling off a job. My parents knew the guy. So they said, okay. So I got to ride my first log truck when I was five. That was Paul Maddox. Pretty cool guy. But I've been hooked on the trucks ever since. And I can tell you what truck was pulling a hill just by the sound of it. So that's kind of where I started as far as loving trucks go. I was working in uh, building products, driving a truck and trailer Kenworth back in 74. I bought my first truck in 76. It was on our anniversary. I told my wife, catch you later, and I went trucking. <laughs> I pulled a reefer and hauled swinging meat, which is really interesting. And then I went into flatbedding. I hauled chips. I've done a few things. I kind of got out of it for a little while, I was on my own, and I drove drove a buddy's log truck, and that was kind of cool to do. You know, Mother Nature's pretty neat when you get out there in the woods, the stuff you see is a lot better than on the highway, but highway was where I was at most of the time. Well, I've driven a 1693 cat, which is a cool sounding motor. Sounds like it's got a bag of rocks in a pan, blah, 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 blah. And then I've driven a 3408, which has got its own style of burp. I've had a KTA Cummins motor, which has got a lot of power, which I really like. And uh, I've never gotten to drive a 12V71. And I've always wanted to, so I thought I was going to just build my own. Well, we got a little carried away on this one, so now I'm not really going to be able to work it like I was thinking I'd do something with. but. It'd still be fun to drive it around and do whatever, so. Actually, my son bought the cab, and it was a standard hood a uh, Kenworth. The cab and the sleeper, he bought it from a guy, the frame rail was cut off. So the cab and the sleeper is what I wanted. And so I had that. I got some frame rails, and I put suspension on it, and then I, I bought a wreck truck and I took the front axle out of that, put it under the front, put the Kenworth frame horns in so that I could make it an A model long hood like I wanted to do. And uh, that's kind of how I got started building the thing. Put that axle in it and everything, put some tires on it to roll around. So then I had a roller and then I started building my, uh, put the, I had to get the cab up there, measure to get it where I wanted to sit for the long hood and started building from there, kind of. And then my boy surprised me on my birthday. The day before, he told me, he says, Dad, he said, I need to borrow your pickup because I got to go haul some grapes for the winery. 
I'm like, oh, okay, go ahead. So he takes off. He said, I got to take off early in the morning, so I'll just take it home. I said, okay. Well, he bought the motor from a guy up in Forks, Washington. So he left at 2 a.m., goes up, picks it up, brings it home. Well, he gets back about 9 o'clock at night. And wife and I were watching TV, and he brought it over, and he had a battery so he could start it. And he fires it off, you know. Well, I can tell at 12. I jumped up, and I said, that's a 12. And I'm out the door. So you're sitting there in the cops watching TV? Yeah, and he fired it up, and I'm like, that's a 12. So I, out the front door, went out there. He's standing there on a trailer, you know, so I jump up on there and start jazzing it a little bit myself. I'm like, man, this is cool. And he goes, happy birthday, Dad. And I'm like, oh, jeez. <laughs> so that, it was pretty cool. That, that's a pretty good birthday present, huh? Yeah. And a yeah. pretty good surprise. I'd have to yeah. tell you that. Yeah, no, it was a big surprise. That's cool. I saw the color. Uh, guy that helped me build build this truck, Bruce, Bruce Gig really a nice guy and he's good at what he does and he took my motor and pulled it all apart took pictures of it and then started chroming stuff and everything but the color was on a hot rod and I loved the color so I had him do I have a bucket T a 23 bucket T Ford and I had him do that with that color so I'm going okay that's going on my A model and then the stripe, I, I always wanted to do that stripe on a Kenworth, so I did that, designed it all and everything. And Eric's Trick Restro is right there in Medford. They're the ones that painted everything for me. Did a, did a superb job, really gorgeous. So Bruce is the one that took all the bolts that he took out of the engine, sanded off all the little markings on them, and then sent them out and got them chrome, got them all back, lines them all out to where they can go back in so he can put it all back together. So the guy, the guy did a pretty good job of, of doing what he's done to the engine. And then the piping and everything, I've seen A-model long hoods with twin turbo V12 and all the pipes come over the top and, and down out, outside the frame rail and stuff. But I wanted to figure out how to tuck mine, run it down inside. Well, then I got on the internet to get me some things that would help with the heat against the paint and it's real thin and it sticks. It's just little things that kept popping up. When you're doing something like this, you, you go forward and you back up. You go forward and you back up. But you, you get there sooner or later. Well, on this, on this, I was hauling chicken feed at the time up in Oregon. And so I would tinker on it. And I had other trucks working. And uh, so I would have to work on them on weekends. So I didn't do a lot of stuff. It just, it took a long time to make a roller out of it. And then uh, my wife and I moved from up by Canby, up by Portland, down to Medford to be next to the grandkids. And I hauled all of the stuff down there and it sat there for probably three years, I'd say, before I finally moved it in my shop. I gotta get going, you know. So I got it in my shop and started doing stuff. But yeah, it's not a quick process. I mean, it. I started getting all the stuff together probably 14 years ago, so it takes a while. If if you're doing it, if you're doing it and working, you know, and, and doing a lot of it yourself, and then then I've got Bruce helping me now to finish it up because I'm a little more uh, hammer and chisel type guy compared to being finesse like Bruce is. Bruce Bruce is really finesse. <laughs> So I needed him putting stuff together so it didn't get nicked up. Because you would have beat some things. Well, I would have, yeah, I would have, I would have made it fit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it, it took about 14 years for me to put this, get it all together from the very start to what it is now, and it's not done now, but it's there. This is this is the first show that this truck has been to, and it fought us getting on the trailer to bring it here. The governor was jacked up. We didn't know if it was the governor, the air governor, or if it was the uh, air dryer that I'd put on, if maybe something got hooked backwards or wired wrong. So it took us about an hour and a half to finally get it all figured out. And then boom, it just built up air and would lift itself because it takes 120 pounds to make it lift it up. So 40 pounds wasn't cutting it. Okay, um, well the bumper came from Valley, which is in California, 
and uh, a lot of the parts that hold the brackets on the back of it, it's a boltless bumper. Those parts were made by Alan, uh, and I can't remember his last name, Lewinsky or something like that. He, he's an old school machinist that took aluminum and, and would cut it down to what we wanted. The stuff on the bumper, a lot of that stuff is custom made. You just don't go buy it. The stacks are Dynaflex. My son's a dealer for them, which helped because there was, I had to have two different kinds of uh, stacks, elbows and stuff sent to me to get what I needed to bend around my battery boxes on the back side because everything's hidden around behind. So it took a Western Star elbow and a Freightliner elbow to get what I needed. Most all the lights are uh, trucks because they have that new one that I can make them all go green. So they're hooked up to be legal, yellow forward, red back, but then I have them all on one switch so I can turn everything green. And we have uh, LEDs on the engine. There's a aluminum, billet aluminum block that's uh, panel bonded to the head and then you can slide the LED strip in there to light up at night. So Bruce can hardly wait for, for it to get dark so he can turn all the lights on. Because yeah. they'll all go green. I didn't know that the backs of the headlight was plastic and then the glass in the front with the seal beam part. So you could actually drill it and put a green bulb in there. So my headlights are all green too. You can, I, when I flip everything on green, all four headlights are green. The steps, I kind of got an idea in my head what I wanted to make because the A model step, everybody knows what they look like if they're a Kenworth guy. You know, they're cut in and I wanted to do something a little custom. So the steps that I've got made were made by a company that's right next door to our trucking place. So it's pretty easy to help tell them what I wanted and bend them up and make them work. It's an association that needs to be around just because everybody's running away from history. And uh, there's so many trucks here at this show. I mean, you got a C-Cab Mac over there. You know, they got, they're got they open on the sides. You got some of them that have the gear shift out in traffic. <laughs> it's pretty cool. There's a lot of stuff I haven't seen even at my age. So the history that's here is awesome. There's a lot of new stuff that has been customized that's really neat too. So I think it's, it, it's an association that needs to be here. I've been to two of their shows. One was up in Yakima, Washington, because I'm a West Coast guy. And, you know, I was working and stuff. And so, you know, there's a lot of things that keep you from going to shows. Now I'm a little bit older, so I can get around a little bit better as far as getting to some of them. And then the one in Salem, and then this one. And those are the three that I've been to. So I finally joined just this year. <laughs>